Greetings from Vulture City, Arizona. It is November 5th. Um, we are wrapping up our parks tour and are on our drive home, but no drive home is complete without having at least one stop to make. So we are at the Vulture City Ghost Town. Uh, we got here a few minutes early. They don't open until nine o'clock. So we're just patiently waiting for the gates to open up. Uh, but this used to serve as a mining area for gold and silver until the operations were shut down uh, for the war um, and uh, to make sure that they could uh, defer resources to the wartime efforts. So uh, we are waiting for the ghost town to open up so we can go and explore the history that they have here. you a map of the area with a bunch of information. So just a little history, I'm going to read straight forward from here. It says, Henry Wickenburg discovered the mine in 1863, and although there are many fables about how Henry discovered the rich quartz deposit and named it Vulture, no credible records exist. The mine operated intermittently since 1864 until World War II when the U.S. government shut it down as non-essential to the war effort. The mine has been successfully back in operation producing gold since 2014. We start our tour with the garage. It is a simple one-car structure. Next up is the gas station. When the mine was in operation, it provided parts, kerosene, fuel, oil for vehicles, and lights. A short walk over to the drilling display allowed us to learn about drilling, blasting, and mucking. Down the road is the blacksmith shop. In 1917, this building was relocated from the high point of the quartz outcroppings and entrance point to the west incline of the mine.
the blacksmith's job was to make drill bits every day, all day long, to compensate for Vulture's hard rock mining. Located adjacent to the blacksmith's shop is the mine head frame. The cart on the mine head frame was lowered into the mine, filled with gold ore, winched back up to the surface, and dumped into waiting wagons. Another short walk brings us to the post office. This building, as many were, was only a pile of rubble before its reconstruction. The post office was established on October 4th, 1880, and Henry Wickenburg, who had discovered the mine, was the town's first postmaster. Walking to another area of the ghost town brings us to one of the largest buildings on our tour, which held the assayer's office, vault, and guard quarters. The first room is the vault room, in which much of the vault was underground. This area is where the finished gold bullion were stored until it was shipped out by wagon. Next to the vault is where the guards resided. Guards were not allowed to interact with any other residents of Vulture City. They knew when shipments were going out and it was feared they might, intentionally or not, divulge information to others. Lastly, the assayer's office, located on the south side of the building, was where the assayers did their work melting samples from the mine in the coal furnace to determine the composition and value of the samples. Next up is Henry Wickenburg's house and what was known as the hanging tree. Approximately 18 men were hung from the tree, although there are only written records of eight hangings. One hanging was attributed to an assayer who was caught by guards hiding gold in the coal bin in their office. Henry was also aware of the danger of Indian attacks and placed small holes near the bottom of the house in the walls to serve as gun ports. Vulture City was a city of 5,000 people, mainly men. Like most old towns in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the town housed a brothel. There was a house madam and rooms for the working ladies.
The doctor's office was originally located strategically next to the original mine shaft. Today, it's located next to the brothel. Arriving at the bunkhouse, there are no longer bunk beds in here. However, during the time that the miners were here, they shared bunks on a rotating shift basis, lice and dirt included. The last building on the tour was the cookhouse, which housed the main kitchen, dining hall, and saloon. Patrons took turns eating at the tables and were literally given minutes to eat. As soon as they finished, and sometimes before, serving girls would remove their plates, wipe them off, refill them, and place them before another hungry miner. Well, that wraps up our time here in Vulture City. I think we ended up spending close to two hours here just kind of wandering the grounds. There's about 14 different buildings that you can take a look at. Uh, you can even host a wedding here in case you are interested in that. Uh, but I think that it was um, a nice fun stop. Uh, not quite the same as Bannock that we visited a couple years ago uh, where there's a lot more buildings that you're able to go into but um, the lady had mentioned and there's a lot of signs throughout the area that say that they really just began restoration in 2016, 2017. So I'm imagining that there may still be some more work to do um, if people come you know, in future years. Uh, and they did have a sticker, so we grabbed one of those to wrap it up. All right, we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye.